Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. In today's video I've got two stories for you and both of them have updates, so let's get started with the first one. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user Friendly Local NPC. Am I the A-hole for not moving my wedding date? My fiancé and I recently got engaged and when looking at dates we realized our anniversary falls on a Saturday this year. Perfect, right? We immediately start planning because it's approximately 9 months out and we have to move quick to pull a wedding together. We told everyone the potential date this weekend and all seemed well. Monday, I got a phone call from my father. He insists that I move the date because my mother has a yoga retreat that weekend. I tell him that this date means a lot to me and I would prefer to keep it if there is any way to move the retreat. There is, but it's expensive. I offered to pay for this change out of my wedding budget, essentially halving the amount that I can spend on the most important event of my life. And yesterday I was told that they would not be taking my offer to pay to move the retreat and that we're expected to move the wedding instead. I haven't put money on my venue yet, so they think I should be fine with giving up the chance to marry on a date that means a lot to me. It became a massive fight and now my parents and I aren't speaking. My father accused me of caring about a date more than I care about my mother. I told them that it felt as though they were choosing yoga over their own daughter. I am considering holding to my original wedding date despite the fact that my parents can't be there. This may make me the a-hole because my father feels that I am putting a date above my mother and because it would prevent my parents from attending. So, am I the a-hole? Wow, talk about self-important a-holes and I'm not talking about you OP because you are most definitely not the a-hole. Your parents are. What the hell is wrong with them? It is your wedding day and they're trying to guilt trip you saying that you care more about the date than you do your mother? Isn't that exactly what they're doing caring more about yoga than they do you and your special day? And okay, let's pretend for one second in La La Land that yoga is more important than your daughter's wedding day. You actually offered to pay for them to be able to move the yoga retreat so they would be able to attend your wedding. And they still refused. Nope, it's not worth the effort. I'd rather you just change your wedding date. OP? No, I wouldn't be surprised if every other major milestone in your life has been overshadowed by your parents trying to control you. And I actually think it's a good thing that they don't attend your wedding because it also wouldn't surprise me that they hijack it and make it about them. And what is your judgment? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. BAM1701 says, not the a-hole. First of all, congratulations on your upcoming wedding. However, I'm sorry to say your parents have made it perfectly clear where on the priority list you, their child, is and it is apparently below yoga. And you are right, she is choosing yoga over you. A yoga retreat is something that can be done anytime. Your wedding will only happen once. Don't let your father say that you don't care about your mother. He is gaslighting you. Epiphanae Asadai says, not the a-hole. Your parents are being absurdly self-centered. The polite thing for them to do would be to reschedule or cancel the retreat without ever telling you so as to not impine on your wedding planning excitement. Just to make sure, because this is honestly so over the top it's baffling to me, is your mom attending the retreat or is she leading it? And OP responds, attending, they have this retreat yearly and there are also makeup dates for the classes she would miss. And Party Television 577 says, not the a-hole. Your parents sound like entitled a-holes though. This date means a lot and if they really care about you, then they will accommodate. I would be prepared for them not to attend. Stick to your guns. This is your day and you deserve for it to be on a day that means a lot to you. Yes, you were right in them saying they care more about yoga than you. Also, if they come back wanting you to pay to change the date of their yoga retreat, inform them that it was a one-time offer that is no longer available. Additional information from OP's comments. My budget is pretty small in the first place, which is why I haven't put any money into a venue. I was in talks for a free venue for that day. 
and the only reason the retreat is half my budget is because my fiancé and I are funding the wedding ourselves while also looking to buy a house. We're already on an extremely tight budget, but I was willing to tighten it further if it meant a compromise. The date is very important to us. It's our anniversary. It falls on a Saturday this year, which happens to be a milestone year, and it won't be on a Saturday again for five more years. My fiancé loves our original date and is proud of me for standing my ground. My family has a pattern of walking over me, and I have a habit of taking it. We're considering delaying the date of the wedding but eloping on our original date without telling anyone until the reception. And no, the yoga retreat is not code for rehab, it's actual literal yoga. She has no addictions except control over everyone around her. She's only gotten into yoga recently. This would be the first retreat she'd go on and I had no idea she had anything like this planned. When they turned down my offer, it was through a text stating, I appreciate the offer, but it simply will not work. The date is off the table. Okay, well, the community absolutely agrees that, that OP is not the a-hole, and with that text message to tell your daughter that her wedding date will not work for you, yeah, they're huge a-holes, man. Anyways, as you guys know, we have the update, and it is a year after the original post, so let's move on with that to see how this story ends. Hey everyone, it's been a while, I forgot my password, but a few people asked for updates on how my last post turned out. Unfortunately, a lot of you may not like the answer. Almost all of you said not to change the date and to enjoy my time without them there. I followed half of that advice. I eventually did relent to my family and changed the date of the wedding. My fiancé, now husband, said that the date wasn't as important as my happiness and the fighting with my parents was destroying that. Now, after six months, we both wish we hadn't because it was useless. They still didn't show up. Not only that, but they convinced 90% of my family not to show up either. I ended up with only four relatives there in a crowd of about a hundred guests. My mother claimed that I had been excluding her from planning. Apparently, I had left them out too much. Found my dress unexpectedly when my mother wasn't there. Booked venue tours when my husband could go with me without asking if my mother could go. So it was clearly a sign that you don't want us there. They kept trying to tell me that if I involved them more, they would show up. But my mother shows zero interest when I asked her about color schemes or if she'd come to my dress fittings. So eventually I realized they just didn't care and wanted something to complain about. So I mainly didn't want to bother them. So they went out of town on the new date and just didn't show up. Never got an RSVP from any of them, except the verbal one from my father a week beforehand when he told me, well, looks like you're not willing to patch things up before the wedding. We won't be there. That's unfortunately. Laughing emoji. Honestly, I figured it wouldn't work out for me, but I really wanted to prove to myself that even if I bent over backwards for them, it still wouldn't be good enough. I proved that, and now I have no doubt about cutting them off completely. As much as I wanted the old date, I'm still glad I moved it so that I didn't live my life with a what if. So in the end, narcissistic mother still got her yoga, I still moved my date, and I still walked myself down the aisle, but my petty self did, in fact, strike back. I had an amazing time and I'd made sure that I left obvious empty seats marked for them and told everyone the truth with a smile when they asked. The few family members that did show are no longer speaking to them either, as are all of the friends who came. The only exception is my brother, who I'm pretty sure they asked to relay the details of the party to them and even he has almost entirely cut them out due to how they've acted. I haven't spoken to my mother since about a month before the wedding, when she told me to get all of my old things out of her house. I speak to my father very rarely and only over things like deaths in the family. My in-laws have basically taken me in as their own and I'm far happier than I ever was in the nightmare of a family I grew up with. Life is good, I changed my phone number right after the honeymoon and they don't have the new one. My husband and I are also buying a house, so they won't be getting the new address. 
As for social media, I kept them unblocked just so they can see updates about me being happy without them. We're planning on kids down the road and I'm planning on telling the kids that mommy's mommy and daddy were not nice people and we don't want you to have to be around not nice people. We wish they had been nicer so that you could have two sets of grandparents who get to know and love you, but your daddy's mommy and daddy love you enough for both sets. Well, peep, even though your parents didn't show up, I think it's a happy update because they didn't show up. And not only that, but you were able to prove that your parents are just narcissistic a-holes who don't love you and you can just be rid of them. And apparently your in-laws have enough love to go around for all of you. So on that note, here's wishing you the best in the future, OP. Thank you for sharing and take care. And now let's move on to the next post that also has an update. This post is also from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user SureLobster6553. Am I the A-hole for telling my mom I won't pay rent and do chores to live with them? Hello, I'm 24 female and I live with my parents currently. I'm doing this to save money and they haven't charged me rent until now. I've been basically paying rent by doing the chores mainly cleaning the house, grocery shopping, managing their bills, cooking their meals, and taking care of my five female cousin. Due to some circumstances, my parents are currently their guardians when I'm off work. This hasn't left me with that much free time. However, it's been in fact helping me save money. So I've been more than happy with this arrangement. Recently, however, my parents have asked me to start paying rent. I asked them if everything was okay and if they're struggling, but they told me that's not the case and they just feel I should contribute more since they've been letting me stay with them for free after finishing college. I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit bummed, but the rent they wanted from me was still a way better deal than anything else I would find somewhere else so I accepted. A few hours ago, however, my mom confronted me about how I've been slacking off on my chores. And after, I told her I can't take care of my cousin since I had plans with some friends. She said they tried to be understanding, but this can't keep going on. And I asked her what she meant. I told her that since the deal was that me doing chores was going to be how I pay rent, now that I'm actually paying rent, I'll stop doing them and I thought that was obvious. She got mad, called me ungrateful and spoiled. I told her she can't expect me to pay rent and do all the chores that left me with no free time and that I'd be better off if I just found my own place, even if it was going to cost me more at this point. She got angry once more because I'd rather give money to some stranger than your own family and said she can't believe how big of an a-hole I am and to just wait until my dad hears about it. He's gonna be back in a few hours and honestly, I've been thinking about our fight, if you can even call it that, and I'm wondering if I really am entitled for how I feel. Well, OP, the way I see it, no, I don't think you're an a-hole. The fact is, they want to treat you as a tenant, apparently, and a tenant doesn't need to contribute with family chores or helping the family out. On the other hand, you've also mentioned that the deal that they're offering is better than any other. So I think you've got two choices. One, you can negotiate with your parents what kind of a deal you're going to get from them. Or two, you move out and find your own place and that way they have absolutely no power over you. For the first option, I'd say, what's the difference between what they are making you pay and what's the market rate going for a place that you'd be interested in? Then I'd probably try to like monetize the chores that you do and say, you know, for example, the babysitting or the trip to the grocery shop, those can be paid services. So you should add all those up and maybe you can counter the rent they're making you pay. At least to make them understand that asking you to do all of these chores that can be seen as family contributions, but at the same time getting you to pay rent Seems kind of contradictory in an a-hole move. But to be honest, OP, if I was in your shoes, I would just look for a place and move out. I think it'd be a lot better for your relationship with your parents if you want to keep one. And what is your judgment? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Forgerous says, it's your family and you have to find middle ground. But in my opinion, you are right. You either pay your rent in cash or in chores. 
they can't just ask you to pay rent and do as many chores as before. Would be best if you would start charging them for babysitting, etc. So they can see that by starting monetary relationship with you, they've made a mistake, not the a-hole. If they would rent your room to someone unrelated, they would not ask them to do house chores or babysit for free, but because you are family and you owe them, they have no problem milking you. The best way is to find a place to live and be your own boss and enjoy the freedom. Red Pen Raccoon says, not the a-hole. They want you to pay them on top of you doing all of their housework? When you have a job? When you said chores, I was expecting you to say doing the dishes or taking out the trash or cleaning the kitchen sometimes. But you're their cook, their maid, their personal shopper, their childcare, their accountant. Do they pay you for any of that? Your parents are guilt tripping you. You are not an a-hole. You're a human being with limits. If I were you, I'd save up as much money as possible and move out as soon as possible. And C. Mahuskula says, Info, how much of a discount are you getting? How many roommates would you have to get to rent a place? How many chores are they still expecting you to do? And OP responds, where I'm from, if you want something that's at least decent to rent for two people, you'd have to pay around 600 to 700 euros and they are currently charging me 300 euros. For the chores part, they expect me to clean the entire house at least once a week, manage their bills, which I pay a third of, grocery shopping, cook their meals, take care of my cousin when I'm not working or doing chores and whatever errands they don't feel like doing to be honest. OP's edit. Thank you everyone for your input. I think the majority of you are right when it comes to the moving out thing. This is probably the only solution regardless of the outcome of our hopefully peaceful family discussion. Thank you for the advice and suggestions. Smiley face. So the community agrees that OP is not the a-hole and in that response to the last comment, yeah, it totally sounds like the parents are taking advantage of OP. So now let's move on to the update to see how this story ends. Some of you have been asking for an update once I have the talk with my parents, so here it is. But first of all, I'd like to clear up some things. 1. English is not my first language, and I suppose the use of the word chores confused some people. By chores, I don't mean just washing the dishes and taking out the trash. 2. A lot of you also assumed that just because I don't think it's fair, I continue cleaning their mess, this means I suddenly want them to be my maid and cook and do everything for me. How'd you'll reach that conclusion instead of the sane one where I'd continue doing stuff for myself is beyond me. But anyways, no, I do not expect them to clean after me or cook my food or whatever. I still do those things. 3. They do not support me financially and haven't done so since I finished college two years ago. I pay one third of the bills with my own money. I buy my own groceries. Whatever shared necessities, toilet paper, cleaning products, etc. I also contribute to. If I want it or need something, I buy it myself. 4. The reason I'm still living with them is literally in the beginning of the first sentence. So I don't know how so many of you could have just skipped that part. And 5. Yes, I am aware that once I move out, I'll have to both pay rent and do chores. I've lived with roommates before and I know I'd have to share chores with them as well. And to be honest, I preferred that compared to what my parents expected of me. Now on to the update. My dad came home last night a few hours after I've made that post and he told me my mom informed him about our fight. But he's tired and we'll talk about it in the morning. I was quite anxious and could barely sleep, not gonna lie. Well, the morning came and we had the talk. My dad told me that he's discussed things with my mom and he does kind of understand why I'd be unhappy with our new arrangement. He still considers they're giving me an amazing deal. I asked, as some suggested in the comments, if they're struggling financially, which he denied. Then I asked if they just want me to move out and don't know how to tell me. Once again, he denied that and both of them got slightly offended, huh? That I'd even suggest that. So yeah, they haven't given me an exact reason for their change of heart. They just think it's still a fair deal even with the added rent. I told them that I get it's their house and they can do what they want. But personally, I don't find it fair. So I'll be trying to move out as soon as possible. They didn't quite like that either. Yeesh. 
My mom brought up once more the fact that I'd rather make a stranger rich than contribute to our household, which made me kind of mad because I think I've done my fair share of contributing to the household so far. They started tearing up a bit and went on a rant about how she can't believe her only child would do this to her and to at least think of my cousin. About how my cousin loves me and abandoning her would destroy her. My father then told me he thinks I'm irrational and that he'll allow me to calm down and rethink my decision when I am less agitated. I was the calmest out of the three of us, lol. Because I'll see that they're right once I've thought things through. So yeah, that's the update. I already started searching for a place and I think I'll just let them think I've accepted their new terms until I can find anything. So wish me luck. So yeah, I guess today's video's theme was crappy parents. I mean, come on, trying to guilt trip you into staying, being their maid and pay their rent? Your parents are crazy OP. So yeah, you just keep to yourself, find a place and move out as soon as you can. By the way, I'd say get all your important documents and make sure you have them in your possession. So on that note, here's wishing you the best in your prompt and fast moving out. Take care OP and thank you for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.